Have you ever thought of starting your own business? Making your life your own? Now's the time. To get started. Welcome to the podcast, Elena. I'm so happy that you're here today. Thank you so much, Susie. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, and we have a really good topic today for those listening. We're going to talk about stress management. But before we dive into our topic, Elena, if you wouldn't mind just sharing with the listeners how you got started in your business and kind of a little bit about yourself. Thank you so much, Susie. I would love to. So I have been a nurse for almost 15 years now, which kind of blows my mind how fast time goes, but it is what it is. And I've done a variety of types of nursing. I've gone from the community to the hospital to nursing home, retirement homes, and even public health and private home care as well. So I do have a very vast knowledge and a broad experience in the nursing field. My overall nursing career has been in the hospital about 13 years. And that's where things kind of started for me with nursing affecting my personal life. I found after a little bit of time, it didn't take too long, that my sleep was getting affected. And as time went on, I started to experience symptoms that were really affecting me, which were migraines, and they happened to come on very frequently, very intensely, and they affected my life overall. And for many years, I searched and searched for answers as to what would cause them. And I always found myself being stuck. And never finding out the real reason, thinking it was hormonal, thinking it was weather, just so many unknowns because all of my tests came back negative. At the end of 2019, I went through burnout for the second time in my nursing career. I hit rock bottom and it was really tough. It was really tough. I remember myself walking into work and I just couldn't really handle being there. I was exhausted. I was frustrated. And my typical self wasn't really there anymore. Everybody knew me at work as somebody who was bubbly and outgoing and ready to help. And when I was walking in that day, I just I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to see people. I didn't want to interact. And I was in a pretty tough mental state because I was ready to just cry. So I went into work and I got through the day. And as I was walking out, I just knew that I I couldn't continue doing this anymore. I went to see my doctor the next day and I walked in and he looked at me and he said, are you okay? And I remember it like it was yesterday. I just burst out in tears. I just said, I can't do this right now. I need some time off. And he said, what's going on? And I said, I just, I can't, I can't cope. I don't want to see people. I just need some time for me. And he said, okay, I'll give you some time off. And so I took between four to six weeks off at that time. It was then that I had time to really look at how things were going in my life. I realized that I wasn't sleeping well and I had sleep issues for many years. And I used to take sleeping pills for many years to a point where I was dependent on them and I had to increase dosages. And I was taking some really strong sleeping pills as well. I didn't even realize, never even considered that I had anxiety. Little did I know I would be in this spiral circle of worrying about what could be and what ifs and 
thinking about all the negativity that could come out of my day constantly. And I thought that was just the normal way of life, to be quite honest. And I didn't realize that I was overthinking everything until I had that pause, realizing that everything that I thought, I would always think of all the possible scenarios that could happen. And just never letting my brain really shut down, which is part of the reason why I struggled with sleep. Because as soon as I'd hit the bed, I would start going into the spiral of what do I need to do? How do I need to do it? What do I need to accomplish? How is tomorrow going to be? Is it going to be a good day? Is it going to be a bad day? The million thoughts came crashing in. And it felt like just as my body was exhausted, my brain was ready to go. And I, I just want to make a comment on that. I, I, because those people that are listening, you're, I feel like you're in my head. But <laughs> you like, and this is why I like to work with medical professionals because we are programmed and trained to look at every single scenario and have an answer for every single thing to take care of every single problem. And if we don't, someone could die or be hurt. It's programmed in us. That's, that's how they train us. That's how they teach us. Me being a medic in the army, I mean, holy smokes, first responder in a war zone. You were in my head just now. I'm like, that was me. Insomnia for 10 years. Where did that come from? That was me. So I just want to say thank you for, for sharing this on the podcast because there's people listening right now that are like, that's me. I thought it was normal. I thought it was normal to be that way. So thank you for sharing that. I just wanted to reinforce to you that you're not alone. And I know you know that, but also for the listeners to say, this is why Elena and I are here. This is why we do what we do in our perspective businesses. So thank you for that. Well, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. And I think us being in the medical profession, we often don't even want to look at ourselves as the victim or the patient, right? We don't analyze ourselves because we don't want to see those issues in ourselves. But in reality, we're all struggling, right? We're all struggling in our own ways. And being in that kind of environment, we know how to put a mask on and show up and be that bright, cheery eyed, bushy, bright eyed tail person that everybody expects us to be and that's the way society perceives us but it's not the reality right we go through our struggles and we suppress it and that's exactly how burnout happens we give 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 and we don't take care of ourselves we don't make time for us to slow down to enjoy the simple small pleasures we don't think about where we actually are to prevent ourselves from going into burnout. We think that the way things are in our lives is just how it's meant to be. And you can't change something until you, you understand that that's not the norm. And yeah. that's why I wanted to bring that back because I thought it was the norm. I thought this was how everybody was. You know, yeah. you come home, you're exhausted after a 12-hour day with 45 minutes each way of the drive, and you come home and you shut down. You're just done. That's it. You've done your time. <laughs> That's it. You know, but you come home and you have a daughter and uh, you say, okay, I guess my day is not done. <laughs> you no, know? and then you're back on the clock for the rest of the time. Right. So it's a, it's a vicious cycle. And if you don't stop and notice, that's exactly what leads you to burnout. Right. And for me, when I hit that burnout, I knew I had to change. Something had to change. I couldn't continue. That was, 
that was the straw that broke the camel's back because this was my second time. The first time it was hard, but this time around it was harder because I did have a daughter and she was almost two. And I couldn't let myself just fall apart fully because I still had to show up, right? So for me, it was, it was tough. It was tough so many ways and when you notice just how busy you are how little time you really give yourself to take care of yourself you don't realize how much of an impact you make so that is why it's so important to take the time to reflect if it's every day every week every month but you have to be conscious of that. That is the biggest thing I can tell you. You need to reflect on how you feel all the time. Because when you're starting to feel a little off, it's much easier to start to tweak habits in your life when it's just the beginning. But when you hit burnout, it's so hard to come back from that. It is so hard to come back from that. And anybody who's been there who knows what it feels like, they know. It's like going through the trenches. And people don't talk about it. People don't know how to help you. And you're fighting for yourself. The fight of your life. The fight of your life. So how is it that you got started in what you do now? After that, and my retrospect, I realized that I had so many things to work on. I had to work on my sleep. I had to make my sleep a priority. I didn't want to be dependent on sleep aid. I didn't want to take prescription medications at all. I knew that my mind was a big culprit of a lot of things because that's what kept me awake. That's what kept me anxious all day, every day, worrying about the what ifs. But the biggest thing for me was probably managing a stress because with my migraines for so many years, I never understood that if I am not managing my stress, that it would be affecting me in this way. And <clears throat> the reason why I say that is because once I started to prioritize myself, little by little, because it has to be incremental changes, my migraine started to subside. And I felt like I was getting my life back because at one point, I went to a neurologist and he told me that because your migraines are so severe and you have them so frequently, I see no other option but to put you on preventative medications for the rest of your life. And in my head, I said, I can't. I can't do that. I'm 20-something. I'm, I'm not doing it. I refuse to. I will find a way. I will find a way. And that's when I found the simple changes that came into effect that started to impact my life. because. Once my migraine subsided, I started to feel better. I was able to be a little more productive. Then once I was able to get a little more productive, I was able to work on my mindset and start to work on the way I perceive things. I was just curious, were you working with somebody, with a coach or somebody at this time that you were going through these changes? No, I actually, I did everything on my own. I started reading. I started reading books and listening to podcasts and attending seminars, webinars. It was all just self-inflicted. <laughs> yeah, and no, that I I love that you share that because I will I, I want to highlight this for the listeners because you can because in your mind you're like I'm gonna find a way and our brain is so amazing. That once you said that to yourself and you're like, I'm finding a way, 
then your brain went to work solving the problem. Like, okay, what, what YouTube video do I need to watch? What book should I be reading? And I just want to highlight that for the listeners because I think a lot of times we look outside of ourselves for somebody else to help pick us up. But we do have the capacity. We do need to ask for help. I'm not going to say don't ask for help because we do. You are able to look inside and go, what do I need? And then your brain actually searched for the, the solutions for you and was like, oh, read this book and go. And that's that. I, I talk about taking inspired actions. And that's kind of what I feel like you're describing here is that you got an inspiration to I'm going to get better. I want to be better. I'm going to figure this out. I do not want to be on medication my whole life. It's not an option. And that gave you it just it kicked you into high gear to, to figure these things out. So thank you for sharing that. Of course, of course. You know, we, we have so many answers within us that we don't even realize until we start to ask ourselves those questions. So for me, that was a big thing. I, I struggled with migraine since I was 16, actually. 16. And I, I had so many tests. I, I don't even remember how many, but I've had MRI, CT scan, CT with contrast. I've had it all. And everything always came back. It's clear. It's negative. We don't have a solution. We don't have an answer. You know, and that's why I, I knew I had to find a way. I had to. I couldn't go on living my life like this. And that's that was a big driving point for me. For sure. For sure. You know, I also found getting my sleep on track was huge, huge, because when you're in the nursing profession and you're changing from night to day, day to night, back and forth frequently, right? It's really hard to get a good rhythm. It's really hard to build good habits. And everybody has to do it their own way. There's no perfect answer for anybody, right? But for me, it was trial and error. And I had to figure out ways and things to do that would allow my brain to relax, that would help me get into that sleep state, which is so important because quality of sleep is what heals us. It's what gives us longevity it's what lowers our cravings you know there's so many benefits to getting a good sleep and it is so underestimated so once I started to implement all of these little things into my life I started to see big changes and I wanted to help those who struggle with those same issues and are giving so much of themselves to others. Because the thing is, when we work in professions that we are givers, we're very rarely takers. And we even more seldom make time for ourselves. Because we're not taught that. We're taught to give and give and give and give some more. And that's what makes us continue to do it but that's what also burns us out and the the reason why I want to say this is because a lot of people in the medical profession in any kind of profession that is very stressful and high paced people get burnt out and then they leave the profession because they don't realize it's burnout they just think that's it I've had enough of this job I can't do it anymore but it's burnout. And the thing is, if you just quit the profession at that point, you haven't healed that part of you. So wherever you go, you're still going to be impacted by that burnout. And it will impact your personal life too. So it's important to look at your life, to reassess where you are all the time. Because that's when you can start making those incremental changes. You know, it, it, 
I wish it was easy and I could look at someone and say, here's the magic trick. I'm going to wave my magic wand and you're fixed. You don't have to do anything. Wouldn't that be easy? And now it's not, it's not reality. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, that is not the reality. Yeah. So what is it that you do now? How do you work with people? What is your business that you do to help people? My business, I work with first responders and health professionals, and I work with entrepreneurs too. I work with them in a personalized approach. So my approach is uh, standardized around five pillars. And it's about sleep. It's about stress management, anxiety, overthinking, and mindset. The reason why I chose those five pillars is because if you're not sleeping, you're stressed out. If you're stressed out, you're overthinking. If you're overthinking, you're definitely going to go into anxiety. And all of this starts from your mindset because your mindset is so powerful. It can change you from point A to point B, just like that. And we don't often realize how important it is. So I concentrate on those pillars because of them being so interlinked. But just because I work in those pillars doesn't mean everybody is affected in the same way. So that's when I do the customized approach. So we work on the areas that you are struggling in. The sleep and the stress management are the top two. Because I find once you have your sleep sorted and you're managing your stress pretty well, you can start to see a shift in you and you will see a shift in your mindset too. And once that all starts to flow, everything starts to flow together. Yeah, it makes me, it reminds me of when a practical way to to think of that, when you're sick, when you're not feeling well and you're not sleeping (laughs) and you're like, you're waking up tired and you're you're groggy and nothing seems right and it you you're in this state maybe you have some anxiety going on maybe you have some over you know overthinking going on because you're worried about i'm sick so i can't work or i can't do this or how am i going to do that or i know thinking back to when i've been sick laying in bed feeling worthless like oh my gosh so many things are not getting done because i'm laying here and i can't do anything and i can remember the moment that I'm healthy, all of that goes away. It's almost like magic. You're like, I was feeling feeling awful for like these last three days. And then I woke up this morning and it's like, I can take on the world. It's like everything, because all of our systems go back into alignment. We're back into homeostasis and like everything is flowing. And when you were describing that, how you work with people, it's like, if something is off, you're not, you're not balanced. So of course you're not going to, you're not going to be making the most of your life if you're not sleeping well. If you have stress, then you're going to be, you know, overthinking. If you're overthinking, then you're going to have like all these things, they, they balance out when you start, you, you, if you start sleeping better, it's easier for you to do stress management because you're rested. So then, and then you can calm your mind a little bit and not be overthinking because you're rested. So like, I love that you're the top two are sleep and stress management because everything kind of, I think, trickles down from there, from what you've been explaining. What I would love is if you wouldn't mind sharing with the listeners as they're listening and they're like, yep, that's me. Yep. I'm there. Yep. I'm getting on the edge of burn. Or I, I might have to start looking at, what would you recommend that they could do an action step? Yeah, go ahead. So based on everything that we've talked about so far for the listeners out there, what is it that you would recommend an action step that they could start doing now, whatever phase they might be in? Like, I hear Elena, I feel some of these things. What do I do now? I'm going to give you a couple quick, simple things to start with. Number one, 
the way you start your day is so, so, so important. I have been somebody who meditates almost every single morning. Now, meditation is one of the hardest things for so many people. I'm going to explain to you why. When you meditate, what happens is your brain is fighting the meditation. What do I mean by that? You will find yourself having a hard time just sitting still because your brain will be flooded, flooded with different thoughts and different challenges. And the most important thing that I want you to know is you don't need to be perfect at this. The best thing to do is just to start and start small. Taking just five minutes in the morning and meditating is huge. What you need to do is just try and let things go. Just let things be as they may. Even if you have thoughts coming in, just let them come and just wave them away. Don't let them sit. Just let them go. It's not about perfect. It's about practice. Because practice does make it perfect. That is one of the best ways to start the day because you are decreasing your cortisol levels. You are starting in a calm state and you'll be able to continue being calm throughout the day much easier when you start your morning in that way. Number two. I love this one. It took me a long time to realize how important it is. But every single day, I go for a walk. Doesn't matter the weather, rain or shine, get outside. We need that nature break in our lives so much. And it is so underrated. And I can't explain to you how important it is because it affects us in such a profound way. So we need to take that time to go outside, go for a walk. 10 minutes is a great way to start. Even five minutes, I would say 10 minutes is better. Any time spent outside, if you ever just truly notice how you feel before you walk out and notice how you feel when you come back, you will feel your whole energy change. Your whole body composition will change. The other thing that I'm going to say is this simple exercise. It's a breathing technique where you speak two words. So you inhale and you say, here, and you exhale, now. And you do deep breaths in and slow deep breaths out. And as you're doing it, keep your exhales long and slow. Keep it rhythmic and just concentrate on your breathing. Concentrate on the way your body feels. Thank you so much for that, Elena. How is it that someone could get in touch with you if they want to work with you? I am on LinkedIn, Elena O'Connell. I am on Facebook, Elena O'Connell. I do have a website and it's stressmindsetcoach.ca. So you can find me on multiple platforms. It's super easy. You can just send me a DM or you can reach out through any of those platforms or my website. Yeah. And I think that's how you and I connected. We connected on LinkedIn and I I like to encourage people reach out in the DMs to coaches, people that you see that you, that you, if you are listening to this podcast and you're like, wow, I really need to talk to Elena because she really gets it. I encourage people to reach out. And I know we've talked about this. It's hard for us to ask for help. It's hard for us as givers to go, Hey, I'm going to raise my hand and say, I think I want some help. So I'm just going to encourage the listeners, if you're feeling anything that was described here today, please, please reach out to one of us, either Elena or myself, reach out. We can have a conversation with you. 
and figure out what works best for you. So I really appreciate you being here today, Elena. Thank you so much. And as always for our listeners, keep it simple.